It is a pleasure to welcome you to the third edition of the lecture series on advancements in geotechnical engineering, from research to practice. The AGERP lecture series is a pro bono initiative led by Dr. Partha Mishra and Professor Sarat Das. Initiated in 2020, it is aimed at disseminating the coupled learnings from academia and industry on some of the key topics in geotechnical engineering. The International Workshop on Unsaturated Soils was hosted in 2022 during the third edition of the AGERP lecture series. The following lecture on application of unsaturated soil mechanics to slope stability was delivered by Professor Hari Anto Rahajo at this workshop. Professor Rahajo has conducted extensive research on unsaturated soil mechanics to solve geotechnical problems associated with tropical residual soils. His research focus has been on rainfall-induced landslides, one of the major natural disasters occurring in many parts of the world. He has applied unsaturated soil mechanics principles to better understand the mechanisms of rainfall-induced slope failures especially in tropical residual soils. These research activities have led to the development of an advanced unsaturated soil mechanics laboratory at Nanyang Technological University and numerous comprehensive instrumented slopes. Professor Aha Zhou and his team have developed capillary barrier system for slope stabilization, geobarrier system for a cover system and a retaining structure, slope management and susceptibility geographical information system for Singapore. In addition, Professor Rahajo has also applied unsaturated soil mechanics to soil improvement for tree stability, understanding the effects of rainfall on tree stability and developed instruments for tree inclinometer with the associated analytics. Professor Rahajo is currently developing advanced moisture sensing technology for urban greenery and monitoring of slope stability. Professor Rahajo is the co-author of the first textbook on unsaturated soils Soil Mechanics for Unsaturated Soils, by D.G. Friedland and Hari Anto Rahajo, published by John Wiley in 1993, the second textbook Unsaturated Soil Mechanics in Engineering Practice, by D.G. Friedland, Hari Anto Rahajo and M.D. Friedland, published by John Wiley in 2012 and over 400 technical publications. He has also presented his research works in numerous keynote, invited lectures and short courses in various countries. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Partha, for your <clears throat> kind introductions and for the invitations extended to me to present uh, this uh, um, particular topic for the uh, Unsighted Soil Workshop. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> for these presentations, I would like to emphasize on the applications of Unsighted Soil Mechanics to slopes to stability. So I will not go into the theoretical detail, but I'll just uh, illustrate uh, how unsighted soil mechanics can be used in practice. Now, we are looking at the climate change. Uh, the trends is very clear also here in Singapore. Yeah, the uh, annual uh, rainfall uh, increases and also the annual mean temperature increases over the year. And uh, if we look at the number of um, uh, days with intense rainfall um, also over the years increases, right? So uh, in that regard, the climate change results in the increase in rainfall intensity and duration. Changes in rainfall events affect the slope stability and uh, landslide risk management. Therefore, we also need to have uh, adaptations to climate change with respect to slope safety preparedness uh, using slope susceptibility map. So it'll be nice to be able to identify within a particular region or zone, uh, which slope that may be uh, affected in the future due to the climate change. So what is the problem at hand here? Uh, we have many um, steep residual slopes, um, this um, from residual salt, um, deep groundwater table. So the zone above it uh, uh, is unsaturated. And then um, the shear strength of this material is affected by the negative water pressures of the soil okay, um, in the zone above the water table, or what we call it suction. Suction contributes to the shear strength. However, uh, during rainfall infiltration, suctions will uh, decrease. As a result, the shear strength will decrease the uh, factor safety of the slope, particularly near the surface where the, the larger suction values are 
uh, exist, um, you will decrease as well. As a result, we, we experience quite a bit of uh, what you call it shallow um, landslides, right? So the um, flux boundary conditions, meaning the rainfall, the, the um, uh, infiltrations due to rainfall and the transpirations, uh, evapotranspiration and evapor and uh, potential evaporation or actual evaporation play a very important role because during infiltration suction will decrease and then uh, during the actual evaporation uh, suction will increase again. So when we talk about climate change, the zone in the ground that is really affected by climate, actually this zone here, this unsaturated soil zone. So this is the zone that we have to take care. Yeah, either um, uh, because of the changes um, in the climate, um, in the flux boundary uh, conditions uh, due to uh, climate change, right? Okay, so uh, uh, this um, uh, data shows the number of um, uh, slope failures uh, all around Singapore, and then also the uh, maximum daily rainfall, historical maximum da daily rainfall that have, we have uh, uh, gathered. And uh, we found out actually there is no strong correlations between slope failures and the maximum uh, uh, rainfall amount. So certainly there are other factors that affecting this um, rainfall induced slope failures. These are the uh, soil properties, yeah? the ability of the soil to take in the water, change the water pressures, and that uh, soil properties are the unsaturated zone. Uh, these are the soil properties that we need to, um, to understand uh, how fast the uh, water can enter the slope, change the suctions, right, and cause uh, slope failures, right? And of course, the shear strength will also change due to the um, change in the uh, suction. So here is uh, one of the largest uh, slope failures in Singapore back in 1989, uh, 2006. We have um, one of the third largest rainfall at that time. Okay, but now um, uh, we got the amount of rainfall keep on increasing. So we have uh, lots of uh, 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 slope failures all around Singapore back in uh, December 2006 and January 2007. These are the recent um, slope failures. Uh, again, these are all due to uh, rainfall. You can see uh, as early as uh, beginning of 2021, we have a number of slope failures all around the island. So. Climate change affects flux boundary condition, infiltration, evaporation, transpiration. Unsaturated zone near the ground surface is a function of the flux boundary conditions. Yeah? And the property of this soil should be considered in the assessment of the slope stability. And they are not constant. It varies from uh, time to time due to the changes in the climate, change in the weather condition. As a result, uh, the factor safety that we calculate for a given slope, it will vary from uh, uh, time to time as well. It's not a static number, but it's a, more like a dynamic number. So uh, the purpose of the objective of this presentation is to uh, illustrate the application of unsaturated soil mechanics in performing uh, regional slope stability assessment under rainfall through slope susceptibility map that incorporate unsaturated soil property. Then designing adaptations measures uh, utilizing the principle uh, unsaturated soil mechanics. Yeah? So uh, I'll not go through the theory. The theories are given already okay, in this uh, particular uh, publication right, with respect to the concept and uh, how to apply it, for example, the, uh, into the numerical analysis and, and so on. Okay? So I'll just uh, uh, emphasize more on the applications. So development of slope susceptibility map for residual source. Uh, in Singapore, um, we need to set up uh, zonations, yeah? use the geological map of Singapore, the digital elevations model, and the selection of soil properties. Then we run the uh, one-dimensional transient rainfall infiltration using TRIGRS um, from USGS. And uh, again, uh, for this one to get the pore water pressure changes yeah, during particular rainfall. And then uh, yeah, the next one will be the 
um, GIS based slope stability analysis for the entire zone. Uh, uh, we, we need to do a three dimensional limit equilibrium analysis using scope 3D. So here is the uh, digital elevation model for Singapore. This is the, the groundwater uh, model. Uh, we developed this based on the a piezometer measurements uh, on the borehole. Of course, we have to be selective to obtain those reasonable um, values of the uh, piezometers, then develop the, um, uh, the groundwater table uh, uh, map for Singapore. Uh, it's all this is already presented in the, the engineering geology. And uh, these are the weather stations that are available. So we'll be able to tap in the information from here uh, in um, doing all our analysis, particularly for the uh, climatic condition in Singapore. We use two types of rainfall. We look at the maximum daily rainfall and the maximum five days cumulative. Yeah, because um, the, for different soil properties that exist in Singapore, um, is one, uh, the, the cost material, high permeability, is more prone to a maximum daily rainfall. But the um, uh, uh, low permeability soil is more prone to the uh, five days cumulative rainfall. Okay? So these are the uh, historical uh, data back from 82 to 2017 that we have collected uh, to be able to find out the, the maximum uh, daily rainfall so far, and then also the maximum uh, five days rainfall. Then the, um, what we need uh, are yeah, basically uh, soil water characteristic curve. Yeah, uh, I'll explain to you later on. It was a very important uh, property of unsighted soil. Uh, best fitting parameters to best fit the data using Gartner's equation because it's needed by the, um, the software itself. Uh, but, uh, and then the hydraulic diffusivity and saturate permeability. Other required parameters, of course, the digital elevation model, the groundwater table distribution, and rainfall, uh, like what we have uh, gathered from the uh, weather station. Uh, the software, we use the TR GRS. For the slope stability analysis, we need C prime and V prime. How about the unsaturated shear strength? Uh, basically, um, uh, we can use the uh, soil water characteristic curve yeah, uh, to predict the variations of unsaturated soil uh, shear strength with respect to suction. Okay? And uh, of course, we, we need to use the final part equation and using the best fitting parameters from Fredland and Singh equation. Uh, other required parameters are similar to the seepage analysis. We use the DEM and PR, uh, GRS, ball pressure distribution obtained from this. And then we input it into uh, the 3D slope stability analysis, uh, scoop 3D, uh, also from the USGS. So these are the sequence of the development. Okay, from uh, uh, First, we need to develop the geotechnical uh, database first, right? all the soil properties. And then after that, we uh, divide the, um, uh, uh, Singapore into the different zones based on the uh, first with the uh, soil formations. Then after that, we divide into a smaller zone uh, uh, in order to be able uh, to uh, do the analysis uh, properly and also uh, to get more, I mean, the homogeneous uh, soil within that smaller zone. Then we combine this different layer for regional CPs and stability analysis, then to get the factor of safety calculation. Then we verify this uh, using either uh, satellite image or uh, go to the site and check the, the, uh, the locations with has a lower factor safety and then perform some uh, verifications uh, using laboratory tests and instrumentation data as a case study. Then uh, of course uh, the adaptation measures and pathway. So uh, in general, we have uh, uh, sedimentary uh, rock Okay, on the western part of Singapore. And then do we have granite here, uh, Bukitima and granite. Here we call it the Jurong Formation and the Old Alluvium and the Skalang Formation. So uh, basically we're looking into the uh, residual soil that come from these uh, uh, zonations. Okay. Uh, we have the database uh, of borehole that uh, belong to the Building Construction Authority. And uh, we gather this uh, information uh, to develop the uh, 
uh, uh, database uh, of soil property. 23,000 boreholes, however, we have to uh, screen them through, uh, find the one that really we can use it with uh, good quality data. Uh, only 650 boreholes with C prime and free prime. And then um, from, uh, from this uh, borehole, we have 4,000 4, borehole with green size distribution. This will help to deter, uh, basically to estimate the soil water characteristic curve later on. And 100 boreholes with sanitary permeability. So uh, we use the USCS classification um, uh, from this uh, soil uh, to estimate the SWCC or soil water characteristic curve and the uh, sanitary permeability functions. Um, it's uh, also, the, uh, we use the ANN uh, to estimate the effective cohesion based on the index properties uh, as uh, uh, explained uh, in this particular publication. So uh, uh, basically, oh, sorry. Basically, um, the geonical uh, property distribution uh, uh, of the grain size distribution and atabara climate, then we the, um, classify the soil based on the USCS. And then uh, we can use this um, uh, USCS classification to determine the SWCC variables based on the guideline that we have developed and um, also the unsaturated soil permeability. And in addition to the borehole data, we have our own data from the university's research um, in collaborations with the Housing Development Board and also uh, uh, National Parks of Singapore. Now, this data come from our uh, experimental slopes that um, have been instrumented and uh, fully investigated. So therefore, we have a lots of the uh, unsaturated soil data that we can combine them together uh, to form the overall soil database for Singapore. Uh, these are all the sites that we have investigated and also uh, instrumented okay, in collaborations uh, with these uh, two organizations, the Housing De Development Board that uh, basically uh, constructed uh, uh, all the uh, houses, uh, housings in, in Singapore, almost all, uh, more than 80% close to 90% now, and uh, national parks that uh, look after all the parks in Singapore. Uh, and then um, um, when we developed this database, we realized that we do need some more data. And that, therefore we took some data, additional data from uh, different sites uh, in Singapore uh, using this uh, gel pushed uh, triple sampler. Uh, let's look at uh, a small zone here that is uh, uh, Jurong Formation. Uh, for here, um, we have uh, uh, boreholes from this Jurong Formation. We have 500 boreholes. Uh, 500 boreholes contain data of effective cohesion and friction angle. Uh, 230 uh, boreholes contain grain size distribution at the birth limits can be used to uh, estimate the uh, unsaturated soil property and 40 borehole contain the saturated permeability. So US classification is used to estimate the SWCC parameters. There is a strong correlation between the uh, uh, percentage of fines and also the effective cohesion. So we will use this one here to also estimate the uh, C prime. Uh, so the geostatical analysis generate the digital soil map okay, used on the geographical information system. And we use ordinary krigging yeah, to extrapolate the data uh, and the reference map and digital elevation model. So here is the distributions of cohesion for uh, Jurong formations. And then we further subdivide again into a smaller zone uh, that have uh, more, I mean, basically uh, more homogeneous soil property within that smaller zone. Then we'll be able to uh, analyze them um, uh, uh, with a reasonable time because otherwise when the zone is too big and it takes uh, lots of computing time to analyze them. Uh, here are the effective distributions of uh, effective cohesion distribution <clears throat> for Jurong formation, for Bukit Timah granite, for old alluvium, Kalang formation. So we have done it for the entire uh, Singapore island. And then after that, we further divide it into a smaller zone for its uh, geological formations. 
uh, here there are uh, distributions of V prime in Singapore, dry density, saturated density. Then for the unsaturated soil, okay, we use the Freeland sink best fit uh, equation. For this best fit equation, uh, we need this um, best fitting parameter A and M and the saturated uh, water content theta S. Now, these are the soil water characteristic curve that I told you that uh, very important for unsaturated soil, uh, clay soil. Okay? Um, the soil remains almost saturated uh, until uh, quite high suction before it becomes uh, uh, unsaturated. So uh, that point here, uh, suction corresponding to this point, uh, when the soil is saturated, we call it the air entry value. Of course, for sandy soil, big pores, uh, it takes um, only a small suction to saturate the soil, and the silty soil will be in between. Now, the shape of this okay, is, can be best fit uh, using this equation. However, you need the data to best fit this. Yeah? So um, we have the uh, special distribution for all this, uh, A and M, uh, uh, also the um, uh, saturated uh, water content. Uh, here is the distributions of A parameters in for Singapore, right? And then uh, these are the uh, distributions of N throughout the island. This is the distribution of M parameters throughout the island. These are the distributions of saturated uh, volumetric water content uh, uh, throughout the island. Uh, here uh, tends to be high because uh, uh, the residual salt from the sedimentary rocks, uh, really clay, uh, clay and silt right, uh, quite a bit. And then uh, so tend to be uh, uh, more towards a fine grain soil. And these are the saturated permeability distribution. Then uh, these are the steps to run the analysis. Okay, So certainly we need the permeability and then groundwater table to, uh, to run the uh, TRI GRS to get the portal pressure distribution during rainfall. And um, the soil water characteristic curve uh, need to be uh, reformatted in terms of Gartner's equation because that's the uh, formula that's embedded in the in the program. And uh, these are the richest equation okay, with the uh, diffusivity here. And for the limit equilibrium analysis, we use uh, scope 3D. Uh, we, we need the representative for the shear strength properties right? and then the portal pressures that we uh, imported from this uh, CPIT analysis eh, to get the factor safety uh, distributions uh, through each zone. So for, let's look at the Jurong formation in here. Uh, we divided into a smaller uh, subzone. Uh, I like to uh, just uh, bring to focus this particular uh, subzone here, GF17. These are the soil properties of that uh, zone 17. Um, here is the uh, slope angle for that uh, zone 17. And these are the elevations of uh, zone 17. These are the uh, groundwater table distribution. And here are the factor of safety yeah, for uh, Jurong uh, formation, uh, zone 17. Okay? So for this particular distributions, we assume that the soil is fully saturated, we do not incorporate the unsaturated soil. Then, yeah, these are the distribution of factor safety. Uh, if it's less than 1.5, is in red. Uh, greater than 1.5 is in green, uh, because it over here, um, uh, factor safety minimum, the required minimum factor safety is 1.5. So there are quite a number of slopes that are in red, are in danger based on our distribution with the assumption that fully saturated soil. Um, it, but if we go to the site and we look, okay, this is actually a natural slope that uh, uh, there is no sign of, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, 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 instability. So, in other words, um, this, uh, our analysis based on the saturated uh, uh, assumptions uh, can be uh, quite misleading in a way that uh, we will end up with uh, quite a lot of uh, high risk uh, zone. So um, then if we run the same for the same zone, okay, we run again the, the analysis using unsaturated soil properties, 
then you can see the drastic change in terms of the uh, zone with the lower factor safety than the 1.5 is basically confined on this uh, smaller area. Then, uh, for example, this one here, one stretch that has a, a, a factor safety less than 1.5, and we go to the side and we can see it's true that actually the slope is almost vertical, but it's already been uh, engineered, or it's been improved using this uh, retaining structure. So uh, it is more. Uh, reasonable and more sustainable because otherwise if we have uh, this type of uh, uh, zone with so many uh, slope that require improvement and then we'll uh, be over designing and also will not be able to uh, sustain the costs okay, associated with the assumption that the soil is fully saturated. Right? So here is an example. Of course, uh, all this uh, improvement work, right? retaining structures and then uh, anchor and all these things are not included in our analysis. Our analysis is mainly based on the DEM and the soil properties and the water table. Next, we look at this uh, zone 15. Right? For the zone 15, um, these are the soil property for zone 15. And then uh, these are the slope angle distributions of zone, uh, zone 15. And these are the, the uh, uh, DM layer for zone 15. And then uh, these are the slope susceptibility for zone 15. So we can see in here at this particular zone, uh, looks like uh, this is based on unsighted, using unsighted soils. Uh, but uh, in here we can see that the factor of safety is less than 1.5 quite a bit. Uh, let's zoom in and take a look on this uh, uh, area, um, whether there was uh, uh, a problem of slope instability uh, or uh, not now, but perhaps, perhaps in the past. Yeah, that is the slope instability uh, that occurred uh, in the, on January 2006, okay? 11th of January 2006. So that's uh, over here. Yeah. So what we did is uh, we analyzed the slope. Yeah? That's the geometry of the slope. Uh, now we verified using a 2D seepage and uh, slope stability analysis, uh, like you're using SIPW and slope W, yeah? instead of a 3D. The 3D is already give, uh, given the indications there is an instability in the zone. So for the 2D analysis yeah, to verify that uh, factor of safety, okay? um, uh, particularly at time of failure. So we need the uh, rainfall data. Uh, we need also the soil property. So the soil property from the side, we get the soil water characteristic curve from the side, uh, from the soil, and then uh, si uh, unsaturated permeability of the soil. Then the, the rainfall data we obtained from the nearest uh, weather stations the data of uh, rainfall leading to the day of failure. Yeah, we know the, the day of failure. So we get all this rainfall data yeah, that uh, uh, preceding the uh, day of failure. So you can see if we calculate the factor of safety based on the soil property that we have obtained and the geometry, you can see the factor of safety decreasing during rainfall and eventually uh, it fell. Right? Uh, so uh, it failed um, on the fifth day. Again, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, it shows um, that actually the 3D map of uh, slope stability analysis or the factor of safety has been verified uh, uh, using a 2D uh, analysis. Now, how do we uh, protect our unsaturated soil? We want them to be uh, on the slope. Yeah, because uh, it has the uh, uh, suctions that can contribute to the uh, shear strength of the, uh, the soil and contribute to the factor safety of the soil. First, if you have high water table, try to lower it. Okay? And the best locations of the horizontal drain will be at the toe. Okay? Uh, because the zone above it, it will be unsaturated. There's no point to put your horizontal drains uh, in the unsaturated zone when the water pressure around it is negative and the uh, pressure inside the horizontal drain is zero. So it will not capture those um, water. It will just uh, flow around it. 
All right. Uh, however, to lower the water table using horizontal drain, it is uh, appropriate and the best location will be as low as possible near the toe. Yeah. So once we lower the water table, we have this unsaturated zoon. How do we protect them? We uh, we can protect them using a slope cover yeah, or the vegetation. So, so uh, both of them I will explain to, in the next um, few slides. First, we use a capillary barrier system based on the unsaturated soil mechanics principle. That is uh, consists of a fine grain layer over coarse grain layer. Now we are talking about non-cohesive. So the fine grain layer here could be sand, the coarse grain layer here could be uh, gravel, yes? sand over gravel. That system will be able to reduce or minimize infiltration into the slope. It provides a barrier. So it's effective as a soil cover in reducing rainfall infiltration and depends in the many countries uh, uh, like Australia or Canada, um, uh, you have uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, evaporation. So uh, uh, we use this evaporation method to remove the water that's already been captured inside the, the sand layer. Yeah. However, uh, in Singapore, we have a, a tropical climate with high uh, amount of rainfall. So therefore, uh, we need to uh, use a lateral diversion uh, to uh, remove the water that have entered the fine grain layer or, or the sand layer. So let me explain the principles behind this. Uh, basically, these are the soil water characteristic curve uh, for sand. Yeah, the blue one here, and this is for gravel, right? For sand, you have a high saturated uh, water, uh, volumetric water content compared to gravel, yeah? but uh, it decreases yeah, at higher suction. Then after that, uh, uh, become unsaturated, right? Um, and then for uh, uh, gravel, right? Uh, becomes unsaturated at the lower suction. So similarly, I can uh, plot the saturated perme uh, permeability of uh, gravel, which is higher than the per saturated permeability of sand, right? Uh, however, as you increase the suction, uh, the uh, permeability will decrease. Yeah, And uh, so the permeability of gravel will decrease rapidly following the shape of the uh, soil water characteristic curve of the gravel. Uh, similarly, permeability of uh, sand will decrease yeah, uh, gradually following the shape of the soil water characteristic curve of the sand. Okay? Uh, remember, water can only flow through the pores of the soil that are filled with water. So the pore that are filled with water is uh, described here by the soil water characteristic curve. Yeah, the amount of water at different suction value. Therefore, the shape of this SWCC affects or control the shape of my permeability function. Yeah, when water content decreasing, permeability also decreases. Right? When the decrease is gentler, like this in here, yeah, for the sand compared to the gravel, and similarly, the permeability functions will behave uh, in that order. Now, in this zone here, we will have permeability of sand being higher than the permeability of gravel. Yeah? So we're going to utilize this um, uh, principle in developing capillary barrier system. Uh, yes, it sounds like a, a, a paradigm shift in our thinking. How could be the permeability of sand being higher than the permeability gravel? Yes, it's possible under unsaturated conditions when you have suction in soil. So what happened if I were to put the sand layer here and then gravel layer here, then the, when rainfall comes, the infiltrations will enter the fine grain layer. Okay? This is, they're all under unsaturated condition. And uh, the permeability of the sand is being higher than permeability of gravel. As a result, water will flow along this sand layer without penetrating the coarse grain layer. Yeah? Uh, uh, so that barrier effect okay, will minimize or um, uh, basically protect the, the soil below it, protect the slope. 
Yeah. So, uh, and also it's good that uh, uh, what, uh, rainwater okay, will not turn into runoff, all of them, as a result will be a uh, um, problem with erosions on the slope or flooding if you have too much runoff. Yeah? So we'll reduce the coefficient of runoff and then many of, uh, much of those uh, rainfall will turn into um, infiltration into the sand layer. Then uh, at certain distance, we um, uh, uh, let the water to flow into a drainage collection and then we drain it out. So this uh, thickness of this sand layer can be designed based on the anxiety soil principle and the same thing with the thickness of the uh, graph layer and the length of this lateral diversion. Cannot be too long because otherwise uh, water will uh, break through to the graph layer. So there is a calculation based on, but I will not go through uh, in detail on this one here, just uh, understand the principle. Uh, here is the slope that uh, at the time, um, uh, the, the housing development board would like to repair because uh, certainly there is uh, uh, there are lots of uh, instability uh, due to uh, rainfall. Okay, uh, so uh, they would like us to uh, basically to try on uh, um, uh, a new method or the, the calorie barrier system. Yeah? And then uh, also to use the vegetation, uh, which is uh, vertifer grass. So uh, these are the slope, uh, residual slow, uh, soil from the uh, Bukit Timah granite. Uh, we repair it based on the, uh, using the Capri barrier system at one uh, area. And the other uh, area, we use the uh, vertifer grass. Okay? In the construction of CBS, granite chip was used as the coarse grain material and fine sand was used as the fine grain materials. Yeah? So each layer of CBS has thickness of 20 centimeter. The vegetated slope is assumed to have a root depth of 40 centimeter. These are a deep rooted grass, yeah? vertifer grass. Uh, so this is when you just planted the grass, but uh, with time they will uh, have a massive uh, uh, root yeah? go into uh, the soil. So it's good for uh, uh, slope stabilization. Here is uh, an example uh, when we just planted the uh, vertifer grass two months later, three months later, and 16 months later, and uh, um, the root um, uh, uh, grows equally deep. These are the soil properties of the residual soil and then fine sand, granite chips, uh, topsoil with vertifer grass that we um, use in the in the, on the side. Uh, these are the soil water characteristic curve. Okay, so again, I uh, like to emphasize the importance of the measurement of soil water characteristic curve for each materials that you use in the laboratory, uh, in, on site. Then after that, uh, to have the permeability functions, uh, to start with saturated permeability and the shape uh, following the soil water characteristic curve. Then of course, these are all the uh, best fit parameters uh, to best fit all this uh, soil water characteristic curve. The shear strength parameters, C prime, V prime, and phi B, that is the uh, angle of increase and decrease of shear strength due to suction. Uh, that the schematic diagram of the, uh, the working uh, uh, diagram uh, for the contractor to build this. Uh, and then also we install the tensiometers at different depths. Uh, here is the constructions of uh, 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 capillary barrier system. Uh, at the bottom here, we already have a coarse grain layer, and then we put a separator. And then on top of that, uh, we have um, uh, 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 fine sand. Yeah. So uh, here is the fine layer, fine grain layer over coarse grain layer, and we put the geofabric as a separator. Uh, so uh, that is the. Uh, construction towards the end. Okay, we have the the fine grain layer on top, yeah? and then uh, you can see um, next to the uh, site. Actually, the, those are uh, luxurious uh, um, uh, houses, right? That uh, therefore the concern of uh, the instability of the slope uh, uh, next to these uh, uh, nice properties. As, as, uh, uh, many of them have a swimming pool yeah, around the area. So we did the um, uh, installations of uh, tensiometers at different depth. 
and uh, at different roles uh, in order to study the performance of the capillary barrier system compared to uh, the original slope without the capillary barrier system and also compare it with the uh, vegetation effect from the vertebral grass. Right? So these are the, uh, the depth of the tensiometers installed at different uh, rows. And uh, these are the measurements of uh, tensiometers the, um, for the original slope. Right? And these are the uh, slope that have been repaired with the uh, capillary barrier system. Certainly you have quite a bit of suctions in the uh, preserve on the slope because of the uh, slope cover that you install. And these are from the uh, slope with the uh, vegetations, uh, vertifer grass, right? Not as high as the CBS. However, uh, it has improved uh, from the original slope. Um, here is the another set of measurements, uh, uh, slope with the capillary barrier system, uh, the one in black in here, um, maintain uh, basically uh, um, high suction compared to the slope that is uh, uh, without the capillary barrier system due to the infiltrations due to this particular rainfall, yeah, um, will have a positive pressures, right? So uh, these are the comparisons uh, based on the same uh, rainfall data. So on this, another side, um, we would like to explore more the uh, effect of this uh, vertifer grass uh, on the stability of the slope and also uh, the aggregates are uh, very scarce here in Singapore, so very expensive. So can we use uh, recycled materials uh, also as part of sustainability? So that's why uh, this particular patch, we have a uh, uh, capillary barrier with the uh, recycled uh, concrete. And this one here, uh, we have the different grass and there's other uh, 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 section. Uh, and then we compare it with the original slope uh, by looking at the tensiometers reading that we install it at the center of each um, uh, pad uh, 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 sections. Yeah. So uh, with all those uh, tensiometers data, we can capture them and then we put it into uh, slope stability analysis and then we look throughout the year, uh, the slope with the capillary barrier system okay, maintain high factor safety compared to the slope without the capillary barrier system. The one that um, with the vegetated uh, slope, uh, uh, in this case, the vertifer grass, uh, maintain uh, high factor safety uh, compared to the original slope, well, factor safety will decrease right? uh, due to the same uh, rainfall okay, that uh, uh, occurring on the, on, on the site. Because on that site itself, we have uh, uh, weather stations where we measure the amount of rainfall and the rainfall pattern throughout the measurements period. So uh, we have uh, basically constructed uh, uh, capillary barrier system at uh, three different locations in here, as, as an example. And there are other locations uh, recently that have been uh, covered with the capillary barrier system. Uh, we also look at the effect of uh, vegetation in affecting the saltwater characteristic curve and the shear strength of uh, uh, unsaturated salt. So here is the, um, uh, what do you get, the slope stabilizations, basically uh, along a Pongo waterway, a new uh, area being developed here in Singapore. Uh, we're using um, uh, mangrove. Right? Um, so these are the, the, the mangrove uh, species that uh, planted there. And then from different times, we take the soil sample, including the root of this uh, mangrove. So apparently uh, there is a difference between the soil water characteristic uh, of the soil with, uh, without roots and the uh, SWCC of the soil with roots, right? So uh, there is a difference. And also with respect to the shear strength, right? Um, they said the shear strength uh, with respect to suction for the soil without root, okay? And this is with root, yeah? So the, uh, the one that with root is in red, okay? It's higher shear strength compared to the soil with root, right? And then, uh, uh, so uh, it is um, evident that the effect of roots uh, 
plays a, uh, a contribute to the uh, shear strength of unsighted soil as well. So if we um, run the factor safety calculations, uh, we have a soil without root, uh, the factor safety can drop uh, due to a particular rainfall. And then for uh, soil with root, right, uh, it drops a little bit, right, but not as significant as the soil without root. Now, the next thing that uh, uh, HDB or the Housing Development Board would like to um, uh, basically in every uh, uh, HDB uh, precinct, uh, there will always be a basement car park with a wall, but they would like to remove this wall to have a wall-free multi-level basement car park. Therefore, we need to stabilize the slope behind it, eh, next to it. So, and then we would like to have, uh, they also would like to have the slope to be green as well, right? So this is uh, basically just like a retaining structure, but uh, uh, it's green retaining, uh, retaining structure. So uh, let me just go through. We can use uh, capillary barriers uh, concept yeah, for basically uh, for low angle slope. Yeah, this is usually used in the many of your environmental application for we have tried for slope in Singapore up to 30 degree right, for slope protection. Now we want to go beyond that as a retaining structure. So for the retaining structure, uh, basically we want to have fine grain of a coarse grain, but a steeper angle. Yeah. So we use backs, yeah? so become like a geo backs. So we have the, the frontal backs here is uh, basically for planting yeah? in order to have a green uh, wall. Then after that, the uh, second back is uh, actually for the um, sand layer or the, the fine grain layer. Then the, behind it is the cost grain layer. We don't have to put it in the back. We just compact it behind the back. And of course, all this back need to be anchored using geo grid. So that's the idea to have a geotextile back. I mean, it's a, a proof soil mixture, like organic and top soil. And then the, uh, behind it is the, the fine grain layer. And then behind it will be the uh, cost grain layer. And so this is another cross section. So, uh, this is the geo back for planting. And this one here is uh, basically the uh, fine grain and cost grain layer. So this one here is the uh, another cross section that you can see. Okay, this is for planting, and this is the fine grain, coarse grain, and then you compact the soil. Okay. Uh, of course, we monitor them as well using um, uh, all the instruments uh, to see the performance of the geo barrier system. So we have this uh, site uh, on Orchard Road uh, that they have been made ready for us for uh, our pilot study. We have uh, uh, basically divided into four slope. Slope one uh, is a geo barrier system with recycled concrete, yeah, fine recycled concrete over cost recycled concrete. Slope two, GBS with recycled asphalt, yeah, uh, fine over cost recycled asphalt. This one here is combination with uh, between fine recycled concrete uh, over uh, cost recycled asphalt. Slope four is the original slope. So this original slope has a slope angle about 36 degree. We don't touch anything. We just instrumented this one. But this slope one, two, three, we make it to 70 degree uh, using a geo barrier system. So that will be the, uh, the view. Uh, slope one, two, three, and this is a gentle slope, the original slope. So that is a, a recycle concrete. Fine of a cost, fine of a cost, right? And then these are the uh, final product of that G uh, GBS with all the uh, the plant uh, have been uh, planted on the uh, on the planting bag. That's the again we need to characterize the soil. Okay, uh, it, it is good to use recycled material again for our uh, sustainability effort. Uh, fine recycled concrete over coarse recycled concrete asphalt and then we get a green size distribution for all each material and our uh, soil water characteristic curve of all this material and then permeability function for each material in order to um, uh, do the modeling of all this uh, uh, geo barrier system uh, here is the back and then the frontal back 
we use this bag uh, with the pocket especially designed and this pocket uh, is to uh, to insert the, the root bulb and that root bulb will grow within this ASM bag yeah, for planting and then of course the, the tail we have um, geogrid uh, basically uh, uh, to anchor all this geo bag and these are the specifications of the geo bags for the geo grid and this is during the construction so this uh, four meter high 70 degree right um, then the, uh, the plants are selected by the landscape engineer from HDB they want to have plants that can survive under uh, uh, low lighting because it's near the basement area uh, if we calculate the factor safety of all, all this uh, four slope, uh, you can see the factor safety of the original slope being higher than factor safety of GBS. Why? Because here slope angle is only 36 degree, here is 70 degree, right? Uh, so uh, for the uh, slope with the GBS, the retaining structure factor safety uh, practically they mean constant under uh, rainfall condition. And for this uh, original slope, factor safety varies uh, significantly um, during uh, rainfall. So uh, that's what uh, we want to uh, construct it okay? uh, next to the basement uh, car park. Uh, so the, uh, 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 the car park doesn't have to have wall. It's good for ventilation, for lighting, yeah? and also for safety. So these are the uh, locations where the GBS have been uh, uh, constructed yeah, as a permanent structure of the uh, housing area. Um, so you can see in here, th these are all the flats and that here is the uh, GBS being planted. Uh, even at a corner, you can design it uh, uh, for a corner uh, of the retaining structure. And here is the uh, they even provide with the water sprinkler so the, <clears throat> the all the plants can grow well and uh, here is the the, uh, the completion of gps now you can see on this side here that is your um uh, car park which is an uh, um, uh without the wall yeah wall three car park so that's uh, the gps okay, the plant grow very well Okay, so come to the conclusions that unsighted soil properties are needed for incorporating rainfall into slope stability analysis. Factor safety is a dynamic factor that is affected by climatic changes. Unsighted soil properties are necessary for the development of slope susceptibility map. Uh, 1D transient speeds analysis can be carried out in the regional area using TRIGIS. And the 3D limit equilibrium can be conducted uh, using Scoop 3D. And the slope susceptibility map can be evaluated using the 2D seepage and stability analysis. So the adaptation measures that we have discussed is the capillary barrier system and geo barrier system using the principles of unsighted soil mechanics, um, which are effective for stability of slopes during rainfall. So, uh, and also the effect of the vegetation itself right? uh, in, in improving the, uh, the strength of the, uh, the soil. So uh, with, with this, I have uh, basically just to illustrate um, the applications of unsighted soil mechanics into uh, you know, geotechnical engineering practice. Thank you. Yes, so uh, filter paper, can be used uh, provided you have a, a proper calibrations and an accurate measurements of uh, water content for the filter paper because it's a small weight, right? And then uh, you can use that uh, filter paper. Uh, again, there are two types, uh, contact filter paper, non-contact filter paper. Uh, make sure you know the boundary because sometimes you will be measuring the uh, uh, matrix suctions or you're measuring the total suction yeah, depending on the equilibration. So uh, all this actually um, we have uh, put it in the in the book but certainly you can use that uh, as a tool. In fact actually uh, uh, right now we are using a centrifuge for example um, 
to get the uh, saltwater characteristic curve. Um, and also we, we combine it with the WP4 uh, for the high suction. To say that uh, most of the time we uh, just um, emphasize uh, on the drying curve because it's uh, mainly um, the, uh, the one that uh, uh, all the equipments are readily available for the drying curve. And also there's some studies uh, have shown that actually um, uh, when you use the drying curve, particularly when you have uh, very little hysteresis, right? Uh, will not affect so much with respect either you use drying or wetting, unless you have a very, um, a very large uh, uh, hysteresis that in, under that conditions, yes, uh, the wetting curve um, need to be the, the, what they get considered. Uh, we are, we are uh, having some uh, theoretical development with respect to this his, hysteresis, and certainly that's the, uh, the direction that we're going to take also. Yes, uh, when you have, um, uh, well, uh, the, the, the difficulty when dealing with the residual soil is uh, the degree of weathering, uh, they are not uniform, uh, even from one location to the other. In such a short distance, it varies a lot. So sometimes the residual uh, depth is very shallow, right? Then right away you have uh, basically uh, rock. Uh, and then at, under that conditions, the boundary uh, between the uh, soil and the rock uh, play a very important role. Yes, I agree. So um, then the, that boundary um, usually the, um, can cause the, uh, what they call the development of push water table and, and so on, or rising of water table. So uh, you could uh, attempt to put the horizontal drain there uh, to lower the water table or maintain the water table as low as possible. Uh, with respect to the uh, cover system, the capillary barrier system, um, I'm talking about here is basically the, uh, due to the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, infiltration, uh, uh, the movement of the wetting front. Uh, so what we have uh, found that actually uh, many slopes, uh, uh, the, the, the movement of the wetting front uh, becomes uh, very important. Uh, unless you have a, a very thin uh, residual soil, really the boundary between the soil and the, uh, the rock materials uh, becomes important where the uh, high water pressures can develop there. Then you may want to put in horizontal drain uh, to uh, release the pressure or lower the water table. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, These are good questions. Uh, is, uh, uh, we have tried. Um, uh, the first part, we use uh, uh, what we call the sand. But the second layer, gravel layer, it doesn't have to be so thick. It's just basically to provide a barrier. So we, we use uh, we call it like a, a, a geo drain, right? Uh, uh, to re uh, replace gravel layer. And uh, it works uh, equally well, either you use gravel or you use uh, geodrain. Yeah. But for the upper layer, it is good to have uh, the, uh, basically the storage. Uh, so when the rain uh, infiltrations occur, it will go into the sand layer and drain it uh, as, soon as, uh, I mean, as soon as possible. And it's, it is good to have uh, a non-cohesive, okay? I mean, if you have some uh, cohesiveness on here, it'll be able to take in water, but it's not easy to release it. So uh, that becomes a problem. That is why I always advise to, to use a non-cohesive uh, fine grid layer. Yes, I think uh, uh, for Levy's um, uh, constructions, um, above the water table, certainly you can put that scalpery barrier uh, to reduce the infiltration, uh, or even the, on the crest itself. Right? Uh, but I think uh, when the soil is uh, fully saturated below that, and then that will not be uh, effective anymore now to, to have a capillary barrier system. 